What is going on, everybody? Welcome to my first ever uh, WWE podcast. I know it's not officially a podcast, but it basically is a podcast since I'm going to be talking about one of my passions. Um, I grew up watching wrestling. Uh, I've been watching it since uh, about the year 2000 or so, um, and uh, I just can't get enough of it. Um, now, I don't know if some of you might not know that, I, that I, I'm a big fan of wrestling. I only watch WWE, but I know about TNA, ROH, um, NJPW, Dragon Gate, you know, stuff like that. I don't, I, don't, I don't really watch them because, well, I've heard TNA is terrible, so I don't, I don't watch TNA. I only watch WWE because it's what I grew up on, you know what I mean? I grew up on WCW, um, and then I transferred over to WWE around the year 2000 or so, um, in case you're wondering, my favorite wrestler of all time is either Sting um, or The Ultimate Warrior. Um, when I was a kid, I loved Sting Ultimate Warrior because, you know, the, you know the face paint and like how Ultimate Warrior, you know, you know was a huge guy and wore a face paint, and therefore he, you know, he looked he looked like totally legit and everything like that. So you know, he was like a superhero to me almost. You know what I mean? This is back when I was like a teenager, so probably even I would say around ten, maybe twelve years old, something like that. And Sting, because, you know, he was mysterious and everything. He always wore the trench coat with the black baseball bat and stuff and sometimes arrived in arenas by helicopters and everything. So um, Sting, your ultimate warrior, is my favorite wrestler of all time. Um, but let's, um, first of all, um, this isn't going to be like a visual thing. I'll, I'll, I'll throw on a logo or two or something like that. But then if you want to, you could listen to this in the background and just do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, if you don't want to watch this video, then by all means, just X out of it. But uh, for those of you who want to, thank you for joining me for the first ever Kenny Talks WWE. Uh, in this case, we're gonna I'm going to talk about, I don't know how long this will be, but I'm going to talk about Raw last night and my thoughts on the Royal Rumble and you know plans for Elimination Chamber and WrestleMania and, um, and all that. So, um, so yeah, um, let's get to it. Last night, Raw from Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, of course, WWE was expecting, you know, CM Punk chance, but I don't think that they were expecting a lot since it's not really like a, a smarky town, you know what I mean? But there were actually about, uh, about like 10 CM Punk chants throughout the night, you know, you know, you know, CM Punk, we want Punk, stuff like that. Um, so, um, last night's Raw was really, uh, to me, it was forgettable. Um, I, uh. Let's see. I I don't even remember what the hell happened on Raw last night. To be honest, let me go on WWE's WWE's website and uh, freshen up on the results a bit. Um, yeah, uh, in the main event, Daniel Bryan beat Randy Orton, even though Randy Orton had um, even though Randy Orton um, had some attempted help by uh, Corporate Kane, the director of operations. Um, really stupid role for Kane to be in. Um, I know that they. Uh, they wanted uh, to plug um, See No Evil 2, which is the movie Kane starring in, which is why they took off his mask, um, at least according to the dirt sheets. Uh, I really don't get that, you know what I mean? I mean, they haven't mentioned See No Evil at all um, for the past few months. Kane turned corporate back in November, I think it was. Um, he turned, um, yeah, he, yeah, he turned like early November, I think, uh, uh, a little before Survivor Series. That was... Uh, what, that was like three months ago, something like that? Four months ago, maybe? Um, and, uh, yeah, no mention of Ceno Evil whatsoever, so I, I, I really don't buy that as, as an explanation as to why he turned heel and joined the, the Authority. Speaking of which, the Authority is, like, really starting to ruin WWE for me, you know what I mean? Um... It's not like it's not heel heat for me. It's like it's like X pocket, you know what I mean? It's like you're you're ruining my enjoyment of the show and I'm about to change the channel or do whatever, you know what I mean? Because like I just cannot stand uh the authority anymore. They're really annoying me now. Um so it's like every time they they come out, it's like ugh. every time I hear Behold the King, the King of Kings, I'm like, fuck. I'm gonna have to endure another tr triple H promo. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so Daniel Bryan beat Randy Orton and Stephanie and Triple H teased that, uh, you know, if Bryan beats you tonight, then, you know, we might consider, um, making Daniel Bryan the new face of WWE and, um, Bryan beat Orton, 
uh, but I don't think it's going to lead anywhere. Um, they just they're really seeming to uh, hold off on pushing Brian for some for some reason. Remember at the Royal Rumble, he wasn't even in the Rumble, um, and then Batista won the Royal Rumble, and uh, that's just causing um, that's just causing a major uh, major backlash on WWE. I think that they're overestimating Batista's popularity. They expected another like uh like I remember that they had the, they had the Rock come for the past two WrestleManias and um they expected Batista to, you know, match that popularity. And so it's like, "Hey, you know, let's get Batista back. That'll be an awesome move. Let's skyrocket him to the main event of WrestleMania." And the fans are like, "Um nope." Nope, 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 nope. We don't want Batista in 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 the main event of WrestleMania. He's been gone for four years. He got gassed after like hitting like a few clotheslines, and like that was it. That was the end of it. He was sweating and all that. And he was just really gassed and just he doesn't have a whole lot of stamina. Um, and uh, I mean, Batista, he hasn't aged the well at all. I mean, he looks he looks terrible. You know what I mean? He he just he just looks he looks he looks bad. And it's only been four years, but he looks like he's aged by like eight years to me I don't know he just he, he just looks like just by looking at his face it's like damn he, he's aged so much um so then uh the shield beat uh Biggie Langston Rey Mysterio and Kofi Kingston and then after the match the Wyatts appeared on the screen and they taunted them again um the Wyatts are awesome you know what I mean they're one of a handful of good acts going in WWE right now uh they're almost too good at their gimmick you know what I mean uh, I I just I love the Wyatts. I love everything about them. I love their entrance. I I, I love the I just love the way they they, they portray themselves out there. Um, Luke Harper last night after he did the the Gator roll to who was it? Uh, I think it was, I think it was R Truth. Was it? No, it wasn't. No, yeah 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 it was R Truth. R Truth. Um, and then uh, afterwards he was like uh, as he looked around, I'm like. Damn, like these guys are so good at portraying themselves as chaotic, uh, unorthodox. They basically look like their gimmick is basically that they're right out of a horror movie. You know what I mean? It, and it, and it's really good. Um, so then uh, J- Jack Swagger lost again to Christian, and you know Zeb Coulter let him have it. And um, I don't know. I just uh, they, they, I think they. They might be going with a Swagger face turn. Um, I'm not sure if that'll work out, even though uh, Swagger has been heel for his entire WWE run. Um, it's been like, what, like six, seven years, something like that. And uh, I don't I don't, I don't, don't know if he can p- uh, pull off being a face. I don't know. I think Cesaro would be better to turn face because, I mean, his Cesaro swing is over. He's, a, he, he's an awesome wrestler. He's got lots of charisma. And um, there were rumors back a couple of months ago. <coughs> excuse me, when um when they were in England, that Cesaro was going to be turning face, and he even got an endorsement from Cena at a live event in England. And um you know there were rumors you know Cesaro is probably going to be turning face on the next Raw, and he hasn't yet. Um I mean I think he's a I think he's a fine heel. I love the I love the all uh, the all Americans. I love the real Americans. Swagger and Cesaro are an awesome team. Um, we the people, you know, all for that shit. Um, but I don't know, Swagger. I don't think he can pull off being a face. I don't, I just don't think he has it in him. But at the same time, he's pretty much done everything he can do as a heel. You know, he's 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 been world champion and stuff like that. So I don't know. I mean, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see where it goes. But uh, I don't know. But uh, something tells me that he's he's gonna be turning face. But I don't know if he can pull that off. Um, then we have the tag titles: the New Age Outlaws, Road Dog, Jesse James. B.A. Billy Gunn, the badass Billy Gunn. Uh, they defended against uh, the the Rhodes half brothers, Cody Rhodes and Goldust, in a cage match. Um, I mean, it was an okay match. You know what I mean? It was okay. Obviously, I think that the, the cage was done just for Cody to have that moment where he moonsaulted off the cage onto Road Dog, and then he was pinned by badass Billy Gunn because Gunn was the legal guy. Um, I don't know. Um. Uh, people are saying that uh, Road Dog is at fault for that moonsault being botched. I think they're both at fault. You know what I mean? Cody, he climbed up the cage, and then he didn't even look to see if Road Dog was in position and ready for it. He didn't look at all, and then he just he just jumped, and I guess just hoped for the best. Um, I think 
but I think I think both are at fault. You know what I mean? R- Road Dog has been in this business for um, a lot of a lot of years, and he's he he he's a veteran. He's a veteran of the business, and you know he should have you know he should have because Cody took a lot of time to you know position himself on the cage before he jumped. Then Road Dog could have you know positioned himself to make up for Cody's lack of looking behind him, and I don't know. Just I feel like that was not really. It 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 wasn't exactly the moments that WWE we were hoping for, like like you remember Jimmy Snuka jumping off the cage with that with that with that big splash like that like that was a moment you know what I mean it's been included in like you know video packages and everything like that and it was like a moment much like Austin's Austin three sixteen says I just whipped your ass moment the, the Cody's moon salts people are gonna forget about that in a month you know. I just and I don't know why. Maybe it was the execution, or maybe it's because the crowd last night were just not into it at all. I don't know. It's a, probably a combination of like a, a couple of factors. But, um, but uh, uh, okay, match. You know, um, I'm just uh, waiting to see where this goes. Um, I'm thinking um, that the New Age Outlaws are going to be dropping the titles to the Uso brothers at either Elimination Chamber or more likely at uh, WrestleMania. Maybe throw in, you know, like a triple threat or a fatal four-way tag match for the title. See, the New Age Outlaws, the Usos, um, maybe Los Matadores, and uh, who else is a tag team? Ah, uh, jeez. The, maybe the Real Americans, I guess, since, since I mean, Swagger is probably not going to be turning face, um, like, like, right away. It's going to be a gradual build-up. And then, uh, and if that doesn't happen, then maybe the Shield, um, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose, maybe because Roman Reigns is going to be getting a big singles push very soon. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I think that that there should be at least a triple threat or a fiddle four way tag match for the titles at WrestleMania. I actually went to WrestleMania last year, and um, unfortunately, it was the most predictable WrestleMania that I can remember in quite a quite a long time. But I enjoyed it. The Punk and Taker match was incredible live. It was so awesome. I, w- I was rooting for Punk, um, but I kind of knew he, he would lose. But, um, yeah, anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Um, next on the list is um, uh, Titus O'Neil and Zack Ryder. Um, I really can't stand when WWE does these kind of matches because, honestly, it's like, let's see, Titus O'Neil j- just turned heel against um, Darren Young, the, uh, the prime time players, and then um, th- uh, three days later, he's got a match on Raw against Zack Ryder. First of all, when is the last time we saw Zack Ryder on Raw in a wrestling capacity? And number two, hmm, I wonder who's going to win, Titus O'Neil or Zack Ryder? That, man, that's a big mystery. Oh, and, and Zack Ryder got a job or entrance. And Taito Sonio has new music, even though he doesn't have a new attire. Hmm, who's going to win? Like, I can't stand that. Like, like, don't they realize that this is not the way to build up talent? I mean, I just I just don't get it. Like, do they think that we're going to buy Titus O'Neil as, like, a, a major player all of a sudden because he beat Zack Ryder of all people? Like, Hornswoggle could beat Zack Ryder, you know? I, I don't know. I just I don't like that. Um, so, Darren Young... Didn't even have a cameo, which I found kind of weird. I figured Darren Young would run out after the match and like beat up Titus or something or get into a fight or whatever, but nope. Uh, then Emma making her debut, beating Summer Rae in a dance competition was a complete waste of time. That uh, I just I can't believe how much Fandango has fallen over the past year. I mean, think about it. Last year at WrestleMania, Fandango beat Chris Jericho. He beat Chris Jericho, and now, look at him. Like, wow. I, the, the, the fall is amazing. He be luck, he'll be lucky to, to, to get a, a cameo at WrestleMania this year. And then last year, he, he beat Jericho. It's, it's crazy. Uh, Sheamus beating Curtis Axel. Obviously, he was going to beat Axel. Um, <clears throat> um, something, with, something with Ryback was teased. But that's I he he probably doesn't have a match with Ryback on Raw next week or maybe SmackDown this Friday. Who knows? Um, Alberto Del Rio and Batista. Um, this was obviously done to 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 set up Batista versus Del Rio probably at Elimination Chamber in a few weeks. Um, I mean I don't I mean does anybody really care about this program? You know I mean does anybody really care about this feud Del Rio and Batista? I I don't know like I mean I I enjoyed the segment last night. Pretty much because of Del Rio, he was, he's he's boring lately. But like, 
I don't know. Like something about him last night, just like I don't know. It was, he 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 was better. It's it, it's weird. I don't know. But uh, Batista versus Del Rio is probably a lock for Elimination Chamber. Then we got the uh, the Wyatts, uh, Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan, and Luke Harper beating Dolph Ziggler, r Truth, and the bland Xavier Woods. Um, obviously, a ma- it was like a six minute match. It was done obviously to build up the Wyatts for their upcoming match with the Shield at Elimination Chamber. And then uh, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins appeared on the screen and said, "You know, hey, you know, you know, you, you know, you're not scary. You know, quit the bullshit." Um, I, you know, we'll see you with the chamber. Then Bray Wyatt's like, I welcome this war and everything. He is, he, he is awesome as Bray Wyatt. You know, like, I don't, think, I don't think a lot of people, like, really thought he had anything going for him when he was Husky Harris. But he has really come into his own as Bray Wyatt. And uh, it just, it just come out, came out, like, a few days ago that Bray Wyatt writes his own promos. Um, and that's, um, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's something that's really awesome because he's obviously really good at it. So, you know, why not? Um, <clears throat> then yeah, Daniel Bryan beating Randy Orton. Um, and did I go over everything that I wanted to go over for uh, Raw last night? Um, John Cena was a notice was was a notable absence, although he appeared after the camera stopped rolling to help out Daniel Bryan against Corporate Kane and um and Randy Orton. Um, so, uh, the Dirt Sheet just saying that he that he suffered an eye injury on on, on Saturday night this past Saturday night against uh, Orton in a match. He was pulled from Sunday's house show, um, and then he didn't appear on Raw last night. But he did, he 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 did appear after Raw to help out um, to help out uh, Daniel Bryan. Um, so now. I pretty much talked about everything I wanted to talk about on Raw because honestly, like Raw last night was just, um, just so forgettable. It was just, it was boring as hell. Like it, that's the thing. Like WWE, uh, in particular, Raw goes through a pattern. You know, like it, it'll, it'll have like two or three really, really bad filler episodes, and then one week it'll be amazing, and then the next week it'll go back to being bad, and then it won't be amazing for another three weeks. So hopefully next week will be good. Um, and then, uh, bet, oh yeah, bad news, Barrett. Awesome. I I I love the gimmick. His his line delivery. Well, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Um, he was also a highlight of Raw. And then Jerry Lawler made that comment about hopefully next week, you know, we won't see you. Um, some people took that as a shot against CM Punk for walking out of WWE. And that's something else I want to talk about briefly. Uh, I say briefly, it'll probably be like ten minutes. Um, uh, news got out last, I think Wednesday. I think it was last Wednesday that CM Punk walked out of WWE. His last appearance on WWE TV was um, nine days ago at the Royal Rumble when he was eliminated by Kane and then choked Sam through the announce table. And we haven't seen him since, you know what I mean? And uh, he's keeping really quiet on Twitter. He hasn't said anything since, uh, I think, um, let me check real quick. He hasn't said, <coughs> excuse me. He hasn't said he hasn't said a word on Twitter since January 27th, and his last tweet was, and I quote, "Thanks for all the support. Keep being you guys. It's pretty cool." Um, the uh, people in WWE have mixed opinions. Everybody thinks it's real. It's it's it, it, it's not a work. It's a shoot, and that uh, you know, people are saying that CM Punk is being unprofessional. But then uh, on the other hand, people are saying that um. That Punk is setting up for himself and everything, and that, you know, good on him, you know. Obviously, the match that Punk was likely going to be in at WrestleMania was going to be facing and likely losing to Triple H. And um, But then it was rumored that Daniel Bryan could, could be getting that spot against Triple H. So then the, then the idea was for Punk to be moved into a match with Kane at WrestleMania. And Punk basically said, that's bullshit. Like, I don't need this, and I'm out. Punk's contract expires this July. That's in um, five months. Um, and, uh, I mean, d- doesn't he have to fulfill his contract, d- contractual obligation or something? I, I don't know. So, uh, Triple H is said to feel d- disrespected by Punk, but he's letting Vince McMahon handle it because Vince obviously desperately wants... Punk to be around for WrestleMania because he's one of the biggest stars. Um, 
Mick Foley re- reached out and said, you know, Punk, come back, you know, have, you know, have like a one more, you know, really good match against Triple H at WrestleMania. And then if you still don't like it, then, you know, call it quits. Some people are saying that Punk is going to be, be retiring. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's going to be retiring, but I don't think he's going to be going anywhere else either. You know what I mean? Like uh, people have said, you know, go back to ROH, Ring of Honor, obviously, you know, maybe go to TNA, but I don't know. I just, I can't see him going um, anywhere else but the WWE because he's been with WWE for uh, what? Um, I think I think eight years. He was signed in I think oh six or oh five maybe. Um, but he but he he he's been wrestling since like uh, when you know like uh, when 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 did he even start? I think it was um, I think it was in the late nineties. I think it was ninety. I think it was ninety nine. Something like that. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> um, yeah, he wrestled in. Yeah, he he started in in ninety nine. Uh, he just turned thirty five a couple of months ago, back in October. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know. CM Punk leaving WWE. I am very upset about it because he's one of the very few things that I look forward to in WWE right now. Um, so um, I don't know. Like, do I think it's a work? Uh, Part of me says it is, but part of me also says it's not. Because if you look on WWE.com, there has been no mention of Punk walking out, and his profile is still up on WWE.com. So, um, I don't know. Like, I think it's... You know what? No, I think it's not a work, and that they're trying to talk him into coming back. But if they can't, then, you know, obviously, what other choice do they have but to, you know, grant him his release from his contract? Um... I know that Punk is supposed to be appearing on some TV show on Comedy Central. I think it was called Midnight or something like that. Where is it? Um, I read that somewhere. Um, what the hell is it? Jesus. Uh, oh yeah, there were there were reports that um, WWE were kicking out. <clears throat> excuse me. The people that WWE was kicking out people who were chanting for CM Punk last night. Um, here we go. A lot of eyes will be turned into Comedy Central on February 12th. That's in eight days next Wednesday. As CM Punk has decided to make an appearance on a show called Midnight, but some people believe that he might cancel the appearance since the host will more than likely be asking him about his backstage sheet with WWE. Um, do I think Punk will come back? Yes. Yes, I do. Because honestly, um, his... Uh, this is reminiscent of the pipe bomb promo he delivered three fuck it's three years ago god damn yo it's three years ago he he delivered that in 2011 the summer of 2011 that makes me feel really damn old like jeez um but yeah uh three years ago he was 100 percent out the door there was no questions about it but then in a recent interview with um i forget his name but uh he he, he runs an mma website um, Punk made no indications that he was unhappy about the current. Or, I mean, he's not. I mean, he's not. You know, he's not, he's not like like ecstatic about it. But at the same time, he didn't give any indication. That he was he was so pissed off about the current direction that he was going to be leaving. So it just this just comes out of left field. You know what I mean? Um, but, um, but yeah, I think that Punk will come back because three years ago it was he was one hundred percent out the door, no questions asked. But then when he was asked about his contract, if he's gonna be if he's gonna be re signing, he said, I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, we'll see how things go. But right now, I don't know. I'm not gonna say yes because then if I don't re sign I'm a liar. But then I'm also gonna not gonna say no because if I say no, then I re sign I'm 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 full of shit. So he said he he didn't know. So obviously he's much happier well, I wouldn't say March happy, but he's happier now than he was three years ago. So we'll, see, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I think that I think that WWE made a huge mistake not only by not having Daniel Bryan in the Rumble in the first place, but having Batista win the Rumble. Um, they were obviously expecting Batista to be a huge return. Everybody's happy. Everybody's like, yeah, Batista won the Rumble. He's going to win the WrestleMania. Orton has to drop the title. And honestly, I'm really tired of, of the WWE calling up the WWE World Heavyweight Championship because that just sounds stupid. Just call it the WWE title because that's what it, that's what it is. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, he carries around both belts still, which looks stupid. But just I just call it the WWE Championship. And the fact that there's only one now is really it, – it, it's really bad because, you know, people like Christian, Jack Swagger, um, maybe even CM Punk – 
Um, you know, when you had two world titles, you you created much more opportunities. You know what I mean? But now there's only one title to go for. We're going to be seeing Triple H and uh, John Cena, and Randy Orton, Batista. We're going to be seeing the same people in 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 the title hunt. You know, I mean, at least with I mean, some people argue the two titles was stupid. You know, like less prestigious. But you know what? I don't care. Like I like two titles created so much more opportunities for for main eventers, and now we don't have that. So I don't know. Um, so Elimination Chamber is going to be. Um, Christian, Cena, Orton, Brian, Sheamus, and Cesaro for the WWE title. Um, I just hope that Orton drops the title because he is just so mind-numbingly boring now. He was good a couple of years ago when he was with the, the Legacy, and you know, in 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 that feud with Triple H, you know, you know, with Triple H breaking into his home and everything. That was when he was last good. Now, whenever I hear "I hear voices in my head." I'm like, I just, I just groan. I'm like, oh God, Randy Orton, yay. Though to be fair, Orton did have a really good match against Daniel Bryan last night, but I just find Orton to be so boring. Like I feel tempted to just, to, to, to just X out the window when, uh, when Orton comes out. He's just, he's just so boring. So who do I want to win the chamber? Um, I, I, I want Daniel Bryan to win the chamber. You know what I mean? I, th- I think he should. To go into WrestleMania as a WWE champion because Daniel Bryan's white hot right now. He is white hot. Like y- you have to capitalize on that. You know what I mean? They need to capitalize on that. And Batista being in the WrestleMania main event, just ugh, words can't describe it, man. I'm just pissed about that. I'm pissed. But the best case scenario to me for the main event of WrestleMania, Bryan wins the title of Chamber. Orton says he's entitled to a rematch, which he is, because he he would be a former champion. So then we have a triple threat at WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans. Daniel Bryan defending the title against Batista and Randy Orton. Um, I don't think anybody wants to see a singles match between Batista and Orton at WrestleMania for the main events. The crowd will shit on that like no other match. Um, then that leaves, you know, what's going to be happening with Undertaker. People are saying it's either going to be Brock Lesnar facing Taker or Sheamus. Um, but then Sheamus was also rumored to be an opponent for Daniel Bryan. I don't want that. I mean, yes, they would have a good match, but at this point, Daniel Bryan is way too hot to not be in, in a title match. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but for now, I'm going to be signing off. It's been almost half an hour, but I enjoyed talking about WWE. It's been one of my passions for many years, ever since I was a kid. Um, this this concludes Kenny Talks WWE um, for this week. Um, I don't know if I'll do this again next week. It depends on fan feedback. And, uh, you know, for other people, that other people are going to say, you watch Wrestling Kenny? Dude, wrestling's fake. Wrestling is not fake. It's staged and scripted, but it's not fake. They go through hell every single night they're out there. They take real bumps on the mats, and they go through years of training to make sure that the moves that they do in the ring are safe. And uh, tell that to Edge, Adam Copeland, tell that to Edge, who had to retire because of injuries he sustained from wrestling. So anyway, this is already 28 minutes, so I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please let me know down below. And um, until next time, guys, take care. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot to mention this, so while I have you, if I do still have you, um, I was trying to record um, a video game uh, f- video game footage for a new video, but uh, for some reason it stopped rec- recording. Um, I was using a DVD recorder, and um, I tried to save the footage I had on the DVD, but it didn't show up on the DVD. So I'm gonna try to figure out what went wrong, and I'm gonna try to uh, um, make that video. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I I got you all updated. I'm not gonna be stopping making video game videos. I'm probably I got a lot of feedback from everybody on my video about, um, you know, what I should do on YouTube and everything like that. I got a lot of feedback, a lot of good, a lot of really good suggestions. So for all of you who said, you know, you know, don't stop making videos, you know, here's an idea. Thank you very much. Um, I got to some of you, not all of you, but um, for everybody who who made a comment like that, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. So suggestions are always welcomed by KGO. Um, Maybe I'll maybe I'll return to NCC 17. I'm not sure, but like I said in the video, it won't be that often. It'll be like maybe four, or five, six videos a year, maybe. It it, it all depends on fan feedback. But um, but yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, not keep you in the dark any longer than necessary. So um, 
yeah, let me shut up. And uh, that's the update, guys. So thank you for watching and um, take care.